Today, we are revealing the secret formula that transformed Victor Hovland's short game and it will save you anywhere from three to five shots per round, if not more. Okay, so the first part of this video is gonna be explaining the science behind the technique so that you understand why it works. Because if you don't understand why it works, you're not gonna believe it when it works, and then it's not gonna work for you because you're not gonna understand the science behind it. So we have to do a little explanation ahead of time is what I'm saying. Then I'm gonna show you on course how it works under the most extreme scenarios, which would be a 60 degree wedge wide open to like 80 degrees, and we're gonna hit this super low spinning shot that everybody loves. But know this, the technique applies in all scenarios. So you can keep your face shut, you can use multiple clubs, it doesn't matter. Short game is where you're gonna apply the science behind the shot so that you can have the best execution ever and save the most amount of shots. Let's go. The best word I can use to understand the concept is this. The ball ricochets off the club face, whatever club you're using. So if your ball is traveling this way and it hits a club face, it's gonna do this. So since the ball's not moving, it's staying there. So the club is actually moving, obviously, and the ball is going to ricochet off the face depending on what the face is doing. The less loft you have with your least lofted club, your driver, you want that club to travel as flat as possible. So you want this wide swing arc so that the, the low lofted face hits the ball like this and then that ball launches that direction. Fantastic, it makes perfect sense. The problem is when you do that with a wedge, what happens is it's coming in low for as long as possible. You have opportunity in between for it to collect grass and water and other stuff that's in between, whatever that is, and then whatever, it's gonna hit with the lofted face and it's going to ricochet upward with spin or not spin depending on what interferes between ball and club face. So two things, one, we wanna eliminate opportunity for stuff to get in between ball and club face. So what we're looking at is descent angle at that point. So we don't wanna be as shallow for as long as possible. We want to come in steeper and we want to exit sooner. What that does is the club is traveling like this. So less interference, because there's less time for grass and stuff to get in between. And as that descends, it bites and it actually shoots off lower. And so when you open the face even, and you're descending at a steep angle, it's gonna hit and shoot off lower for two reasons. One is that descent angle, and the ball's only on there for a brief period of time. But if you're wide open for a long period of time, it's gonna slide under and pop straight up, the flop shot. Here is our swing arc with our driver. This would be a pretty good swing arc with the driver. And right about there is where we hit the ball. And this is not to scale, obviously. And this would be pretty good. We want that. Now as we move into the wedge, the problem is a lot of people try to keep that same shallow swing arm and hit the ball here. This sounds good, but in reality, this is bad. So what people do is they say, oh, I need to hit down on it. So I'm gonna take this shallow swing arc of my wedge and tilt it. So I hit down on it. And then I'm hitting down on the ball and hitting like so. That's what a lot of people do. And they think, oh, I'm just hitting down on the ball. This is also bad. All you've done is you've taken this and turned it into this. So therefore, this is still no good. We need this. We need our swing arc to be steeper and 
shallower, narrower, which produces great things. All right, two quick things before we take this to the course. One, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss anything because I'd hate for you to make more double bogeys than ever before this year. That'd be awful. Two, remember this, that we're playing low shots. Why low shots? Because they're so much easier to control that low shot going here, going there, than this high lobber. Inconsistent, can't control the spin, can't predict what it's gonna do, but the lower ones, you can. And so the wedge shots here apply no matter what wedge you use and how much or how little you open that face. If you wanna keep it square, totally fine. All the same rules will apply with the technical side of how to achieve this shot in real life. I'm just gonna show you with the wide open 60 degree wedge because if it can be done there, it can be done anywhere and you can do it and have great success and save all the shots in the world. Let's hit the course. Okay, now that you understand the swing arc as it applies to short game, let me show you the different results you're gonna get based on the width of your swing arc. And to show you how this applies, I'm gonna keep the exact same setup for all different swing width arcs, which would be feet are narrow, super narrow right here. We're talking a club head width in your setup always. Weight, I'm like 90% on the front foot. And when you do this, your shoulders are just naturally gonna be a little more tilted this way as opposed to this way. But what happens is people get here, they like to get shoulder down, which starts getting your swing arc to bottom out way back here. Now, if you do that with a wide swing arc here, you're gonna hit way behind the ball. If you miraculously don't hit way behind the ball and shoulders down, wide swing arc, I see, I can't even do it. I hit way behind the ball. If you don't hit way behind the ball and you happen to get the ball, the ball will go a lot higher, but you'll know that it will have no real spin and it will be so much more difficult to control where you're landing that ball with this type of situation. So that's what we're trying to avoid with all of our short game shots. So you don't have to do this. Just let it be natural. Don't side bend on your right side here. And then what we're gonna do is open that club face up a lot. So we're going from a 60 degree wedge to 75, 80 degrees right there. And I'm sinking all my weight into that left knee right there. Okay, now, that was with my narrow, perfect short game swing arc. Now, if you do everything correctly here, but you have this wide swing arc, this is the kind of result you're gonna get. Where you're gonna get chunky um, behind the ball here, and you bring in a lot of other variables, like bouncing the blade into the ball and zinging it across the green, or just if you're on a super soft lie, just chunking it outright. When we're talking width of golf swing, it's really extending this right arm as long as possible. So with your driver and these fairway and longer clubs, you want this at the beginning and you kind of want to get back straight as soon as possible. In the short game shots, we don't want that. What we want is right elbow in to our gut here and I wanna keep it there most of the time here. I just wanna keep it in my gut. And I really don't want my body turning away from the target so much. I wanna keep my body perpendicular to the target. I really wanna keep my body facing this way. Right angle to the target the whole time. So I'm here and then that keeps the club in front of my hands. And that allows me to get that club working vertical as opposed to wide. And that's what we need on these little shots to get the desired result. Now, when it comes to grip pressure, ideally, I want you loose and light, like really soft. Like, I don't want the club flying out of your hands, but I want it like, if you grip it tighter, that's okay. 
you can still pull off the shot with a firmer grip, but it's just a lot easier to get the club going vertical with a looser grip as opposed to a tighter grip. So looser is better, but you can do it tighter. This is a tight grip for me here. And you could still get it down in there and get it spinning nice and low. So grip pressure isn't gonna be like a deal breaker here, but just remember, the looser you could do it, the better off you're gonna be. Now, as we impact the ball, you're gonna have this wide open club face. You're going to have to resist the temptation to shutting that down like this. You do not want to shut that toe down like that. You're gonna have to fight every ounce of your being because that's you're just naturally gonna think like, oh, I should do it. No, you really want that to come through and stay this way the entire time. Because remember, you're coming, it's open, but you're coming vertical on that thing here, and that's just gonna shoot the ball off in the direction the club path is traveling. It's not necessarily gonna travel the way the face is pointing. It's going to travel the direction of your swing path. So our release is not toe down. Our release is here. So it feels like we're kind of cupping this wrist on our follow through. Although because of our angle of attack and our narrow swing arc, we're actually releasing down. So it doesn't look right, it doesn't seem right, but it performs right. The only other piece we need to tackle now to finish it off so you have perfect results is a little bit of what does our body do through these shots, because that's very important when manipulating or managing our swing arc width. Okay, a common problem that you're gonna run into is this. A lot of people are going to want to turn their body toward the target here. We don't wanna do that. Now, with all your other shots, driver, whatever, you hit, and you wanna rotate that body around here. If you do that in the short game, what's gonna happen is you're gonna do this, and you're gonna come over here and fling it around, and you're gonna send that thing all the way across the green. So the feeling I want you to have on all your short game shots when you come through is that your right shoulder, I want this to come to my left toe, like here. I want it down like this so it matches my toe, my foot. So my foot is here. I want my shoulder, this shoulder in particular, to get to the toe. Here, it's coming across and it's more a focus of my left shoulder that's not what we want here. I'm gonna focus on my right shoulder just coming slightly down so it matches my shoe. And this is gonna get your body moving in the right direction, kind of down here and not up and out around like that. This is really critical when it comes to managing that angle of attack and the width of the swing arc. Because once we rotate, we take that width and we move it around to this side and it's lengthening everything that we're trying to shorten. So although this may seem complicated and difficult in and of itself, with a tiny bit of practice, you'll be able to get super comfortable with all your little short game shots around the green. And uh, a few may even go in. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. See you next time.